Bye bye. I've got moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now there's Sky Rizzy. Three out of four people achieve 90% clearer skin in four months after just two doses. Sky Rizzy may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Before treatment, your doctor should check you for infections and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fevers, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or coughs, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Nothing is everything. Talk to your dermatologist about Sky Rizzy. Learn how Abby could help you save. Hello, E.T. It's good to see you. Is that Harry or Jerry? Only E.T.'s on the set of the talk's pop star transformations for Halloween. All I know is my husband would love to see Ariana. <laughs> <laughs> I had so much fun, but clearly Jerry and everybody else had a lot of fun with those transformations. Can we say a big thank you to the cast of Celebrity Exorcism? Yeah. Yes! Did that, but thank you for being here. It was fun. Happening now. The death toll in last weekend's tragic drag racing accident in Kerrville has now risen to three. Next, we're learning more about the latest victim in the crash. The verdict is in. We'll take you inside the courtroom to tell you what the jury decided in the Louis Benevento trial. That's coming up. Now that the cold front has passed, morning temperatures will take a bit of a dive. I'll tell you how cool it's going to get in just a bit. News at 5 starts right now. First at five, another update on that deadly crash in Kerrville at a drag racing event over the weekend. We have now learned that a third person is dead. The Bear County Medical Examiner tells us 46 year old Rebecca Cedillo of Converse passed away at University Hospital. She was taken there on Saturday following the crash and at the time was listed in critical condition. Right now, a funeral service for one of the victims, eight year old Santiago Martinez, underway on the city's south side. Tonight at 6, our John Paul Barajas will have a live report from Kerrville at another vigil being held for the victims of Saturday's incident. Also new at 5, a 39-year-old man from Selma facing a murder charge. The New Braunfels Police Department sharing details of Clifton Adam Manili's death, or rather arrest on Facebook. He is accused of fatally shooting 40 pardon me, 34-year-old Kathleen Josephine Johnson last night in New Braunfels. According to New Braunfels Police, officers responded to a call for shots fired about 1030 last night at the intersection of North Live Oak Avenue and West Mill Street. Again, this is in New Braunfels. They arrived to find mentally holding a handgun in the street next to a pickup truck. Johnson found dead in the driver's seat of that truck. She'd been shot multiple times. It's unclear what led up to the shooting. But this case is being investigated. We also. We, the jury, find the defendant, Louis Joseph Benevento, guilty of murder as charged in the indictment. Signed by the presiding jury. We also have some new developments in the murder trial of Louis Benevento, the 73 year old now found guilty in the murder of his wife. Alicia Wills. That verdict delivered just hours after Benevento took the stand himself, painting a picture of anger and rage coming from his wife before he admitted on the stand that he fatally shot her. Erica Hernandez has been covering this trial. She takes us inside the courtroom for the moments where he made his final plea to the jury. I loved her more than she could ever possibly know. And in fact, I still... <laughs> Still do, do today. Louis Benevento taking the stand in his defense today, describing his version to the jury of what took place the night of May 22nd, 2019, when he shot and killed his wife, Alicia Wills. Benevento told the jury from the moment Wills arrived home from work that day, she was angry. She was extremely furious. She hit me with her cup as soon as she walked in the door. According to Benevento, things escalated, and at one point, Wills pointed a gun at him inside the home. The gun went off, hitting the ceiling. Benevento says he then tried to pack and leave, but Wills went outside and called 911. Then she just kind of popped up from the other side of her Prius with the gun like this. Benevento said he then fired from his own weapon out of fear for his life. During cross-examination, the state pointed out several inconsistencies in his testimony, saying his story changed from what he first told police, and today he mentioned new details about the shooting that he had never mentioned before. Benevento's self-defense claim was not enough to sway the jury as he was later found guilty. 
Now, the punishment phase for Benevento began right after that guilty verdict was read. In fact, the jury could soon find his sentence as it sent him anywhere from five years to life in prison. We'll have more on that sentencing later this evening. Live at the Canada Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Erica. Three stories to know today. A 24-year-old man facing a charge of manslaughter after he hit and killed a motorcyclist last week. Daniel Joshua Kampa arrested yesterday in connection with the deadly crash. It happened Friday at North Park and North Loop Roads. He's accused of driving double the speed limit before he crashed into 61-year-old Romero Maldonado, killing him and then leaving the scene. A man is dead, a woman in the hospital after a shooting and crash on the east side overnight. According to San Antonio police, witnesses told investigators the man driving erratically around 1 a.m. on I-10 near Foster Road before the truck hit a light pole. Investigators say a woman who was sitting in the passenger seat had been shot. She was taken to the hospital in critical condition. The 26-year-old driver found dead behind the wheel. Investigators believe he died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Shell casings and a weapon recovered from inside that vehicle. Crime stoppers needing some help finding an assault suspect. They say 67 year old man was hit by someone driving this SUV back in September. It happened in the 4400 block of North Hine Road at the Brighton Terrace Apartments on the east side. Investigators say the victim was involved in an accident with the driver of the SUV, had stopped at the complex so they could speak. But instead of talking with the victim, the suspect reversed into him at full speed, severely injuring him. If found, the suspect faces a charge of aggravated assault. 28 million American children are closer to becoming vaccinated for COVID-19. This after an FDA advisory panel voting to recommend emergency use authorization of Pfizer's COVID vaccine. The official green light from the FDA could come any day. Yesterday's recommendation comes after Pfizer presented clinical trial data that showed the vaccine was nearly 91% effective in preventing symptomatic disease in young children. For one. That's an incredible finding. That's actually more effective than a lot of routine childhood vaccines we use. The Centers for Disease Control prepping for a meeting next week to discuss its own recommendation for children ages 5 to 11 as well as a fourth booster for those who are Im immunocompromised, which would be administered six months after the third dose. And what a morning with some showers and thunderstorms, even a little bit of severe weather. Officially at the airport in San Antonio, we picked up 0.98, so about an inch of rain, and a good chunk of our area did pick up nearly an inch of rainfall. Uh, Temperature-wise, though, much cooler today. Only in the 70s, some locations south of town making it into the 80s, but here in San Antonio, we topped out at 78. Take a look at the rainfall elsewhere, according to our weather watchers. Really nothing in Del Rio, Warren's backyard, 81 degrees, 82 Eagle Pass. But you look at the areas of green on the screen, and that indicates close to an inch of rain. Even Universal City picking up more than an inch, 1.4. New Braunfels just over an inch in Seguin, 1.1. It's still gusty out there right now, but give it a few more hours. Not as breezy tonight. Northwesterly wind at 5 to 10, but temperatures falling off quickly. We're talking jacket weather at the bus stop. I'll tell you how much colder and break it down for you across our whole area coming right up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. When it comes uh, to uh, traffic this evening, one thing Adam's talking about, those high wind gusts, watch out uh, for that. Just be aware for a flying debris and slow down because the winds can definitely affect you on the roadways. We are seeing some issues on the roadways this evening. This is the north side 281 at uh, San Pedro. You can see there's uh, some delay after a crash at Wurzbach Parkway, uh, traffic down to 14 miles per hour. Also seeing some uh, other major delays across the area, including on 1604 westbound between 281 and I-10, half an hour just to get from 281 to I-10. Very slow traffic this evening. We'll keep an eye on it. Steve, Ursula. Thanks, Sam. Natural gas prices soaring by 10,000% during this year's winter storm. Well, since then, CBS Energy has been scrambling to try to figure out how to pay for its $1 billion bill. It is why San Antonio Congressman Joaquin Castro introduced a new bill today. It would prevent natural gas 
price gouging during emergencies. In a statement, Castro said, quote, while Texas families face life or death situations and struggle to stay warm amid freezing temperatures, natural gas sellers raked in more than $10 billion in profits, end quote. One local economist said that, yes, this could help, but says it will face opponents. Given how partisan Congress is right now, you know, I'd say maybe not. <laughs> And also, there's does have potential downsides to the bill. Coming up at six, hear how two local economists are describing the pros and cons of this bill and what it could mean for consumers. New at five, replacing your car's key fob. The basic ones lock and unlock your doors. The fancy ones do a whole lot more than that. But no matter which kind you have, replacing it costs a lot more than cutting an old fashioned set of keys. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on how you may be able to save some money. Remember life before key fobs? They're super convenient until you lose one. The cost to replace the latest key fobs can be as much as $400 or more, depending on the brand. Then add another $20 to $130 to program the thing to work with your car. It could add up to $500 in some cases. Before you pay big bucks for a replacement, check your warranty, car insurance, or roadside assistance coverage to see if they cover the cost. If your car is less than five years old, chances are you'll have to go to a dealership that has the expensive equipment required to program a new key fob. If your car is older, you can likely save money by buying an aftermarket key fob online. We found a number of options on Amazon and Walmart along with online auto parts stores for sometimes $200 less than the dealer. Many less advanced fobs can be laser cut and programmed by a local mechanic or locksmith. But if you're up for the challenge, you can program it yourself. You'll find all the instructions in the owner's manual. Just know that most customer programmable key fobs will require two current working keys in order to program the new one. If you do need a new fob at the dealer, that process is pretty quick, typically less than 30 minutes. And in case you didn't know, there is usually a mechanical key hiding inside the key fob for cars with push button starts. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. The clock is ticking before President Joe Biden departs for Europe. Why congressional Democrats are pushing to pass that Build Back Better plan before he leaves. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Brought to you by Toyota. If you've driven through the streets of San Antonio, you've undoubtedly come across the impressive artwork of Los Otros murals. The work of Sheck Vega and Nick Soup has been seen in various murals across South Texas and the country. We take the elements of traditional styles and colors and elements and we give them a new spin by doing it in a whole new genre of work with spray paint, new tools, and just give a more contemporary, modern feel. This year, the pair has been tabbed again to paint a calavera from start to finish during the Day of the Dead Riverwalk Parade. I can't wait to see what the energy of, of the people of San Antonio bring. I've been painting together for, for such a bit and also being friends for such a long time. It's, it's kind of like dancing. We definitely have two different perspectives that go onto it, but they seem to meld together. The roots of this dynamic duo are based right here in San Antonio, and with every impressive mural, they reflect the culture of the city and are bringing vibrant colors and life to our Day of the Dead celebration. To have one of the biggest celebrations in the nation, I think, for the city of San Antonio is deserving. Uh, we're the large Hispanic culture here to celebrate traditions and art, so what better way than to combine both of those? It's something where we could share this, and this is, this is how we party. This is how we have a good time. This is how we, we remember people, how we share our, our experiences with our loved ones. Negotiations for President Biden's Build Back Better plan continue. Congressional Democrats are hoping to reach a deal before President Biden departs for Europe. Progressives say securing the deal before the G20 summit, followed by a United Nations climate conference, could strengthen his argument for a stronger global response to climate change. Big win on climate is in the Build Back Better Act, not the infrastructure bill. So we have to do both together to give him that credibility that he really needs to be able to go there with. The one trillion dollar bipartisan infrastructure bill passed by the Senate has yet to be voted on in the House. 
A reminder, early voting still running until this Friday. There are several elections on the ballot, including state constitutional amendments, municipal races, school bonds. Voters will also decide on who will fill the seat for House District 118. You can head to KSAT.com for polling locations and sample ballots if you like. We've got a lot working on our six o'clock news. Myra Arthur joined us here in the studio. Myra, first thing up tonight, focusing on a local hospital, I understand. And mental health, Steve. We have talked a lot about the toll the pandemic has taken on mental health. Well, now we're seeing the impact of that play out at a local behavioral health facility. Leaders at Laurel Ridge Treatment Center say that the psychiatric hospital there is at or near capacity. They're attributing that to COVID-19. But there's another problem, a labor shortage. You've heard of those issues. Well, that is a complicated combination for people in need of help. We'll look at how this facility is adjusting to all of that and what others around the country are dealing with as well. We're also continuing to follow that story of the anti-Semitic flyers spread throughout a north side neighborhood. Today, we visited the local Holocaust Museum. Why those who work there tell us that educating people about that horrific period in history is a way to try to prevent acts of hate in the first place. And a new nonprofit is now in charge of foster care for 27 South Texas counties. It's no longer Child Protective Services. We'll explain that change and more coming up at 6 o'clock, guys. Thank you, Myra. Taking a look outside, Sky 12 over the Botanical Gardens. Uh, pretty windy out there to have a helicopter up. Well, it's, it's a windy day. You can tell when that front came through, not only the rain and the thunder and lightning, but the wind. And for so many of us parents of young ones, it just came at the worst time right before they were supposed to wake up about an hour before and they couldn't get back to sleep. I know Myra's laughing off in the corner. She gets it. She's raising her hand. Yes, I know a lot of you can relate. And then it was off to the bus stop. Now, tomorrow morning at the bus stop, you'll want to have a jacket for the kids for sure. And really the next couple of mornings. Tomorrow's also going to be another windy day, low humidity all the way through the weekend. Don't even think about the humidity. It's not even going to be on your mind. You're not going to feel it again until about next Monday, Tuesday. Okay, let's talk temperatures and how cool it's going to get tonight. You see the cooler temperatures off to the north. That cooler air continues to push southward and spill into central and south Texas. Still 87 Laredo, 91 Brownsville. Those are the exceptions. Temperatures will continue to cool off. Currently in the hill country, low 70s. Elsewhere, 70s to even some 80s. Pleasanton 84, 79 Gonzales and Kerrville, 72 degrees. But let's fast forward to tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., roughly the bus stop time for many folks, Canyon Lake 47, Kerrville 44, Fredericksburg 42, Uvalde 49, Hondo 46, you get the idea. Temperatures dipping back down into the 40s for parts of our area. Seguin 49, Timberwood Park 49, and Bernie about 47 degrees in the morning. Meanwhile, Von Army, Elmendorf about 52 to start the day. Temperatures will drop even more Friday and Saturday mornings. We'll see an even bigger dip and I think widespread 40s for the mornings Friday and Saturday. So very fall like and actually running below average by a good 10 degrees to round out the work week and start the weekend. These are the morning temperatures and they do rise again as we get into next week by Monday, Tuesday with the return of a little bit of humidity in the air. Here's the big broad system that's stretching from Canada all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. You see this big swath of precipitation and even some thunderstorms and some severe weather has been associated with it. Big dip in the upper level flow causing this activity and we were right on the tail end of it, but close enough to squeeze out about an inch of rain at the airport 0.98 to be exact at the International Airport in town. Moved through at about 5 a.m. Knocked out power for some folks. It was quick moving though. Still dumped some heavy rainfall and even tornadic activity closer to Houston earlier this morning. That's all out of here and in its wake gusty winds. Oh yeah, we talked about that. You feel the wind outside. These are just the most recent wind gusts and at the airport clocking 32 miles per hour. We were up to 39 miles per hour earlier today. Hondo 38 miles per hour. You get the idea. It's gusty. Now the wind will subside a bit overnight. It'll only be about 5 to 15 miles per hour, but tomorrow we crank it back up. So tonight we'll get a little bit of a break. First thing in the morning, not overly windy, but once we get to the heat of the day tomorrow, that's when the wind really picks up and we're talking wind gusts again tomorrow. 
back into the mid 30 mile per hour range, about 35 miles per hour uh, gusts again tomorrow afternoon. So another windy day tomorrow. It's something you'll notice cooler this evening. Of course, 63 by 10 o'clock by midnight already down in the 50s. Low humidity, not as gusty tonight. Tomorrow about 50, but that means some 40s in outlying areas and then 77 for the high temperatures. So we're not going to see a big warm up, but temperatures actually close to average in the afternoon. Friday will be in the mid 70s. Saturday still high temperatures in the upper 70s. Halloween very agreeable. 83 the high temperature. So trick or treating weather mostly in the 70s on Halloween with low humidity and not much of a breeze either. That's great parade weather too for Friday. Yes, it is. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. All right, the Spurs seem to be in a pattern here where they just can't close the deal yeah. against quality teams. And, and especially an opportunity like that last night when the Lakers did not have LeBron available. At the same time, DeJounte Murray scores a triple-double, but they still fall in overtime. We'll show you what happened. And how about the Braves pitcher that breaks his leg but stays in the game? Coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs had more than one opportunity to beat the Lakers last night, playing without their star LeBron James, who was a late scratch due to an ankle injury. Still, the Spurs started off playing from behind. But thanks to DeJounte Murray and his fifth career triple-double, the Spurs were able to get back into this game behind his 21 points, 15 assists, and his 12 rebounds. Not only did the Spurs get back into this game, they also took the lead at the end of the first, thanks in part to Jakob Pertl's 27 points and 14 rebounds. In came the third quarter when Lonnie Walker IV hit not one, not two, but three three-pointers in a row on a personal 11-0 run that included two free throws, finishing their career high five three-pointers and a season high of 21 points. Part of an 18-3 run to get the Spurs a 97-85 lead going into the fourth quarter, but Anthony Davis and Russell Westbrook combined for 14 points to retake that lead. The Spurs had a chance to win it at the buzzer, but Murray's pull-up jumper on the other end is short, and we're headed to overtime as a result. In the extra period, the Spurs were outscored 11-7 as Westbrook put it away with a two-handed dunk. Spurs fall 125-121 to in overtime. I feel like I got a good shot, a shot that I make, you know, uh, a lot, you know, every day in practice. So, uh, you know, whether it's me taking a shot or any of my teammates, at the end of the day, the end goal is to win a basketball game. So we don't get into uh, who's taking the last shot or who's doing this or doing that. You know, we're trying to win games. We have played three great teams these past three games, and we have continued to get better and better and better against top-tier talent. Um, this is the first time that the young young kids, young players have gotten the chance to play the game. And, um, you know, we haven't come up with the win, but we're damn near close. All right, and there was some major concern for the Lakers last night when Anthony Davis looked to bang knees with DeJounte Murray late in the fourth quarter before he went up for a rebound, came down holding his right knee, but he stayed in the game for the win. We'll just have to see how sore it is. He just banged knees with uh, one of the Spurs players and, um, you know, obviously got sore, but he was able to continue. Um, we'll see how he responds overnight. All right, next up for the Spurs will be a road trip to Dallas on Thursday at 7.30. The Astros got in trouble early, wound up losing game one of the World Series to the Atlanta Braves after a two-run first and third inning. Framber Valdez was chased off the mound after giving up five runs, but Braves ace Charlie Morton fractured his leg on this comebacker. But get this, stayed in the game to strike out Jose Altuve before leaving the game and the 6-2 to two victory. How often have you ever seen that in your life? And he left the game right after that. Afterwards, yes. You after the strike ball awkwardly on the mound. Crazy. Wow. Thanks, Greg. Still made the play. We'll be right back. All right, we'll see some 40s out there tomorrow morning. I'm thinking 50 degrees around most of San Antonio, especially downtown area, but you get to Bernie 47, Timberwood Park 49, even Seguin and New Braunfels 49 in the morning. By the afternoon, we're talking upper 70s, even mid 70s in the hill country and some locations north of downtown. And then even cooler mornings Friday and Saturday. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News of Five. World News Up next.